Drake says Drake is flopping. Uh, you know, we know we know Drake's going through quite a bit after everything with Kendrick. So let's see why why else our boy is flopping. Let's let's find out. It never be a good thing to to be flopping. So at this point, it's been over three months since the climax of the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. No and since I last spoke about it on my channel, a lot has happened. On Kendrick's side, he's really only done two things. But if this was a boxing match, it would be like him landing two massive right hooks after video. he noticed Drake's leg started to wobble. Obviously, the first thing he did was host the pop-out concert back on Juneteenth. Here we saw Kendrick perform for over an hour and a half. And this was the first time we would see him since he released the hit record Not Like like us. Obviously, the crowd was sold out. It felt like a very big moment. Dr. Dre introduces him and he comes out to set the tone with Euphoria. Kendrick would then go on to perform some of his biggest hits from Humble to DNA, Money Trees, and All Right to name a few. He would also play 616 in LA and even bring Dr. Dre back out to perform Still Dre and California Love. Now obviously the highlight of this concert it's and the moment that everyone was kind of waiting for was when Kendrick would perform Not Like Us. Spinning the number one record in the world six times as the crowd sang every word back to him every single time. Turn the strike of course. <laughs> Now with every playing of this record, Kendrick would bring a bigger and bigger crowd out on stage with people both famous and culturally affiliated up there to dance on Drake's grave. And during this concert, Drake fans everywhere were scrambling, very upset that an arena full of people, including LeBron James, were rapping along to their goat being called a PDF file. Drake takes you and like, am I letting you down? Yeah, what I tell you? What did you say to him? He said, he, he said that. I, I can never let like let you down. Drake fans in general. <laughs> Watching Drake over there stuttering with LeBron, bro. That, that shit can't be real, bro. No way. That's just so funny, bro. I can't like. This nigga Drake so funny sometimes, bro. And he is not even on purpose. It's really not. Bro, have been unwell since the destruction of Drake began. Like it's been almost four months since the inception of the direct beef, and many of his bot fan pages have been crying ever since. With some of them becoming so delusional that they actually think Drake won. Amongst the Drake dick riders, Academics is obviously the most famous, even creating oh, a separate yeah. Twitter page for the sole purpose of creating positive Drake propaganda and a ton of Kendrick slander. Several times having to delete tweets in a very embarrassing fashion you know because what, they were straight- Hold on, bro. That nigga Wade has to be the most accurate description. And a ton of Kendrick slander. Oh, Several times bro. have- Look at that nigga, bro. That's Academics, bro. Having to delete tweets in a very embarrassing fashion because they were straight up lies trying to make Kendrick's relationship look like it's falling apart. And we will get back to that, Man, as well as the other allegation that Kendrick's best friend Dave Free is the father of his kid here in a second. But for now, let's talk about what Drake has been up to because the guy's been a mess. At first, he kept going out of his way to try and push this narrative that Kendrick's diss record was only number one and only broke records on YouTube and Spotify because of bots that he paid for. He did this via a kickstream chat room where he wrote in, Hey Pragmatic, can we take it back to 2022? Can you backdoor Eddie like Spotify backdoor the streams for that one song from that one guy? And of course, academics would run with this narrative for weeks trying to spread it around online. Like he even went as far as to interview a 16 year old kid who claimed he was the one who got these alleged botted streams for Kendrick. So somebody reaches out to you for 30 million streams, what'd you tell them? How, many, how much money? So I was promised payments after, but up front, I was promised 5K. Okay. They told me it was for a big artist, promised 5K up front. Okay. They, sent, they uh, sent me 2.5K. And then I was also promised after the song performed, I was also going to receive, you know, a, a little percentage of the song. So points on the song. They, and they also, the reason they did it is because they also needed that oh, song to win. Now academics would later have to eat the crow and admit that he talked to someone with some background information over at Spotify who claims all the Kendrick streams were legit. Now, all right, I, I'll be honest with you. I talked to my man from Spotify. I won't say the name right now, but legit Spotify, nigga. He said, hey. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know what that person on your stream was talking about. Them streams, them Kendrick streams is real. And to me, not only did this theory seem pretty far-fetched from the start, 
But let's no, also not forget anything. how the streaming services have favored Drake in insane ways over the years. Now ever since the public perception was that Drake lost, he has done everything in his power to try and show how unbothered he is by both Not Like Us, but also by the beatdown in general. Yeah, Going bowling under the name 69 God, continuing his bot narrative, and releasing some really average songs. Like I'm talking about the Drake stimulus package oh, potentially God. no longer existing. None of these mini songs he's released even came close to sniffing the number one spot, and most of them fell off the charts just as fast as they went on. Comparing this to the past when Drake would give an artist a feature, it was almost a guaranteed smash hit. Like even a young thug and 21 Savage feature couldn't help him get there as their song would peak at 28. He would even Damn. deploy little Yachty to help him push this unbothered narrative. He really d he didn't give a f really no no he, he was on he was genuinely unfazed. Yeah. I was bro, come on, bro. You cannot lie, bro. Like he's just he's lying, bro. He's he's lying. Expected so a lot and I talked to him. He didn't that shit didn't bother him. Like, That's it. What is the lack of eye contact with it, bro? He not even like locking in with him, bro. He like, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, okay. Still, all of this has not stopped Drake fans from coping with this loss in the saddest ways possible. I think that people had a weird moment. People were supporting a weird record. I've said this from day one. I'm like, yo, bro, I just don't, that message, I cannot dance and groove to that message of that record. <laughs> and seeming like he lost and he wasn't a part of the, all of that was bullshit. It was just some shit that people made up, tried to make a real thing, tried to throw into the game. It worked. It did not work. It Why did Drake, who has dominated the last 15 years of my life, have it. to remind us? Because that record worked. No, I'm telling you, it's because people were caught up in a moment. They were yeah, caught a in a great, moment. He, Kendrick smoked it. <laughs> yes, but when you say he lost, what did he lose? He didn't lose oh, I anything. I, I, Music-wise, what did mother. he lose? Music-wise, music what did he lose? The battle. The battle. Cool. And Aubrey's angels would even turn on me, claiming I am mentally ill for my interest and ability to cash in on one of the biggest moments in hip hop history. Like the sheer irony of someone who has an entire page dedicated to dick riding Drake, calling me out for actually making money on my personal opinion on this situation is hilarious. Like this dude wakes up every day gargling Drake's nuts and defending Damn, him for hours, but I'm the one with the issue. Not DJ Academics, not all these other Drake meat riders who have not shut the fuck up for one second. I mean, they even tried to make it seem like I am who Kendrick is talking about when he says it's what the culture is feeling. But it's like, no, I'm not the culture. I'm just a big fan of hip hop who loves to see two titans from my generation finally go head to head after obviously sneak dissing each other for like the last decade. These oh guys God, are the culture right. though, and they weren't rocking with Drake, with some of them being That's his right. good friends in the past. Now, something else that Drake would do is create this alt Instagram page while also releasing some behind the scenes footage and a ton of unheard songs and demos. And to be honest, this 100 gigabyte drive that he continues to update has not really had the online impact that I felt he thought it would. I mean, don't get me wrong, as a big fan of hip hop and as a fan of Drake, it is cool to see some of these behind the scenes like, looks. To, but I like, y'all need to find that original video with fucking the weekend in the background like that, bro. Like this, this man, Drake pulls up, ignores the fuck out of this nigga, bro. I just see why The Weeknd does not like Drake, bro. And Drake, it is cool to see some of these behind the scenes looks, but I feel like I haven't really seen anybody talking about it or it generating any sort of excitement. At least not what you would expect from a massive drop like that from Drake. One thing I'll say about all of these Drake drops is it's feeling very, very, very uneventful. Like Drake's music, it really marks a time. You know what I mean? It marks a time, it marks a moment. It's special, you feel me? And these leaks or these drops or however they're doing them, it's just really uneventful. I will say it's beyond clear to me at this point that there were many people in all true. sorts of industries who really felt like Drake has disrespectfully overstayed his welcome in the game. Like if one conspiracy is true in all of this, I think it's definitely that. Whether you're talking about the dude who used to own Twitter or Serena Williams' husband. You know, everybody was very, very <sighs> excited about the elimination of Drake. Now something else that has come out about Drake is more controversy, as What's the Dirt pretty much hey. pulled his file and I here first, bro. that has come out about Drake is more controversy, as what- Hey, 
More me, bruh. Just more me. That's it. More controversy. 2025, here we come. Plus the dirt pretty much pulled his file and found some very interesting stuff regarding Almost more questionable 22. activity with at the time minors, including Bella Hadid and Madison Breer. Though his his house that he has, he has a bathtub that is literally the size of this room. And it's gigantic and so dope. I was like sitting in it. I was like, can I can I just lay here and like chill? <laughs> I even found some footage of this exact Drake Memorial Day party where you can tell that the women in attendance to me don't really look like grown women. I mean, come on, guys. Like, I'm a fair man, but, like, I'm not even assuming here. Like, these are clearly teenagers, right? Here he is in St. Bart's at a New Year's Eve yacht party, and what we can easily conclude about this party is that teenage girls were definitely in attendance because there's clear evidence of this happening. I got back from St. Bart's on Monday. Basically, it was an after party that we got invited to. It was on the Vava. So many cool people there. We talked with Drake for a little bit. This girl was born on February 5th, 2004, which would mean she was only 17 years old during this yacht party. I was just in St. Bart's with Drake and that 150 supermodels was in it. <laughs> and I think that Kendrick knows something about these parties. And y'all should definitely go check his full video out because there's a whole lot of Easter eggs in there regarding the peculiar things that Drake has yeah, done over the I'm years and how Kendrick one. subtly wove them into these disc records. I did also want to note here that Drake has been linked oh, to this, this creepy one. streamer. This is my homegirl from Toronto right here. So Rick. now, okay, so Snow, I did talk about her before. I do not know a lot of information about her still, but if she really is that bad, because this, this is the type of person to talk bad about her. It's like, if she is usually that bad, that's uh, can't be good. It's like, I, I was trying to give her, like, benefit of the doubt because I don't really know her, but apparently she might be, uh, bad. Hey, raid her stream, right, right. right this okay. is my homegirl. She is very funny and she's very crazy. Who has been asking unsuspecting individuals to get nude on stream using one of those video chat websites that connects you to a random person, while also not divulging that she is streaming to thousands of people and obviously not verifying ages. Hey girl, you are so pretty. How old are you? Thank you. I'm 18. Oh, you're so pretty. Do you want to flash each other our boobs? Hey girl, you are, yeah. so, you are so pretty. I feel like you and I can solidify this friendship and flash each other. What do you think? He's streaming. No, I wouldn't get you to flash. That's rude. Why do you get so freaky on here, Snow? Like, what? Why is that? Like, why do you get? Why do you make? Why do you? I literally tell freaky? people I'm a guy. It's just funny trying to get people to get freaky, and then you tell them you're a guy, and they still don't feel away. They still want to do crazy shit. Now Kendrick's other major hook that he would land How was with the "Not Like Us" video, which has amassed over 111 million views as I write this. The video itself is riddled with slick imagery and allusions to various Drake allegations and of course some not so subtle jabs thrown in there. In this video, Kendrick once again brings out quite a few people from Compton to dance on Drake's grave. He got Kendrick even trolling the imagery from the Family Matters video in this scene. He got him doing these push-ups in what looks to be some sort of isolated set. You also have him whooping the Al Pinata's ass with the disclaimer that no OV hoes were harmed during the making of this video. Which I don't know if that's necessarily true, as so many of Drake's fans were still crying like a redheaded stepchild. People were speculating oh that these storage containers were an allusion to Drake's potential involvement with human trafficking. And you also get a DeMar DeRozan appearance here. Obviously, with him being mentioned in the song, this was not surprising. But it should be noted that he used to apparently have a pretty good relationship with Drake back when he played for the Raptors. You went to Drake after you were traded. What, what, what did you guys talk about? But besides basketball, everything, just the reassurance of like, you know, that was my, that was my, my partner. That was a right. friend. That was a friend of mm -hmm. mine. No matter what, you know, when it come to him, he'll forever have a friend of me and loyalty out of me. Then we get Kendrick responding to the family drama allegations yeah. with his wife and children. And it's quite obvious that these are both his biological kids. Like you cannot fake those years. That is genetics. <laughs> he has his wife dancing on Drake's yeah. grave over the line about it being God's plan that. to show them the liar. Like this is all he had to say about a pretty unfounded rumor regarding their relationship. It's not really like Drake where you have several young girls talking about their personal connections with him. Millie. Not to mention that this music video is directed by the person Drake claims to be the father of Kendrick's baby, his best friend Dave Free. People are also clowning Drake when this music video came out, saying that he could never do this with his family, because not only was his hand forced when he revealed his son due to the Pusha T beef, 
but we also know that the woman he got pregnant was a corn star whose image he was trying to clean up. People were also noting how Drake was trying to break up families with this beef. And bringing up this clip where Pusha yeah, talked really about how Drake looks at family relationships in general. What is the real issue with you and marriage? So then now I gotta, now I gotta dig deeper into who the person is. Now I gotta dig in and see, what are y'all like? What's your family like? Oh, your dad left you at five. Oh, I get that. You, he never walked you to the bus stop. Mm. You're mad about this. You know, your mom, she never remarried. Oh, you don't even know what like family is. So you, of course you don't dig marriage. And lastly, we got the symbolism with the light-skinned owl in the cage, which I think is Kendrick's way of saying that he has the control now and that he essentially has Drake trapped in the corner. Now, while this music video premiered on YouTube and started trending online, Michael Rubin's white party for the elite was also going on. And of course, Drake and many other celebrities were in attendance. Apparently, Drake was nervous about this and he pulled up with a massive entourage. In reality, I heard that Drake showed up there, all that bullshit about niggas got limited amount of tickets. I heard they gave Drake about 20 tickets. He showed up with all his goons and he was in there looking to see what's popping with anybody who had static. You might have to do the pop out with 20 niggas. Like, yo, what's popping? What's going on here? What's going on here? What y'all doing? And then came with the mob Certified what, nigga? What you say? <laughs> yeah. And many people noted that Drake was looking around a decade older than usual in these photos. Like this man is pushing 40 years old. I think it's time for him to stop calling himself the boy. Also to me, this party's just always screamed weird Illuminati shit going on. Y'all know P Diddy used to host these things, so enough said there. Throughout this beef and even in the aftermath, my main takeaway was actually how stark the contrast is between these two superstar rappers. You have one dude addicted to fame, power, and all that it entails, and the other seeming to try and live as normal of a life as he can. And at the end of the day, Drake ended up with a seriously damaged ego, in my opinion, and the way he has decided like to move like since his loss has been desperate. From leaking his own songs to test the waters of public opinion, to using DJ Academics and other streamers as his mouthpiece, it really all tells me that he doesn't know what to do at this point. Like back when he went to war with Pusha T and clearly lost, it was like, okay, I'm gonna use LeBron's podcast to try and clean up this kid situation, then I'm gonna go ahead and drop a couple of hits, and it was really all good, most casual fans could care less. And I actually think it's in his best interest to go away for a little bit, make Smart the people miss him bit. again, and then he's gotta come back dropping absolute hits. Because the songs he's put out lately and been featured on have had almost no momentum outside of his fans. I mean, don't get me wrong, overall he will be fine and he will continue to be one of the biggest artists on the planet. But to me, this is where we might start to see the downward momentum of Drake's career really begin. And realistically, that probably would have been the case either way, as the dude has been on top since I was entering high school. But I do think this real, beef really sped up that process minute, and exposed some of the biggest kinks in Drake's armor that seemed bulletproof for such a long time. Now, unless something absolutely crazy happens, this will probably be my last Drake video for quite a long time, but I did kind of want to wrap a bow on this entire thing. I will say that Drake has claims on his fake Instagram that apparently Game 2 is coming and he's gonna win. I'll put it in the front page, back page, middle page, wherever, headliners, column one or two, we will win Game 2. Back we will win game two. So this might not be the last we see of this beef. And overall, I don't want to see Drake crumble. I do hope that he goes on to make I'm some good music for his wait. fans. Obviously, I do have some questions about some of his nasty behavior over the years. But those are questions we likely will not get answers to for a very long time. I do feel like Kendrick has a crazy, more commercial, damn type of album on the way. So I'm excited for that as well. And overall, the most pathetic thing about this whole situation to me hasn't actually been Drake, but his delusional fans. Like, this shit ended four months ago, and they are crying day in and day out, scrambling on Twitter trying to defend their GOAT. And I just find it hilarious. It's actually the main reason I'm dropping this video right here. But either way, I do want to thank you guys for subscribing and dropping a like on today's video. But as you guys know, it's been your boy. Alright, so that seems like the pretty much the gist of a Drake flopping. That boy has, it seems like he's like, I don't know, he definitely is flopping a bit, he's floundering, I don't know, he, he, ain't, he ain't flying, he ain't soaring, he ain't, he ain't doing nowhere really, like the songs he's been dropping, they, they've been some heat, bro, don't, don't get me wrong, I have them on repeat, you feel me, I, I'm still a Drake fan, you feel me, I enjoy, I enjoy the music, 
but Kendrick won, bro. I'm I'm aware of that. I know, but I'm not I'm not like a Drake fan that sits here to defend like you know anything and everything Drake. You feel me? Like I just enjoy the music aspect. It's cool. Like the songs were pretty good, and, you know, and that, that was about it. But they didn't chart or whatever. I'm not surprised. It's like not like us is like it's been winning for a minute. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's still top five or whatever. Honestly, I thought it'd be like maybe top ten, maybe like maybe number nine, ten. But it, I think it's a uh, still a good song. It is overplayed, but it is what it is, bro. People enjoying the song, they're enjoying the song. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs>